Okay, so Raspberry Pi OS has had a recent update and thanks to Pharonix for bringing this up. Now I'll probably get another comment about not using Pi-hole because this site is just littered with adverts. And uh, I kind of haven't used any ad blockers because it's what pays for you know free internet and uh, also something like YouTube. Obviously the adverts pay for my channel or definitely contribute a lot to it. But these adverts update all the time and it is, I mean, I should check the data as to how much uh, internet it's using because yeah, it's, it's just constantly updating and changing. Really, really fussy. Anyway, uh, it's a good story, good site for Onyx. Uh, so Raspberry Pi OS updated, now powered by Linux 6.1 LTS updated lib camera. And using this newer Linux kernel, it's, it's a big thing really and something that the Raspberry Pi is so good at as using a more up-to-date kernel compared to obviously I do a lot of videos on all the rock chip single board computers and they use a much older kernel and it's really nice to see the Raspberry Pi still getting these updates after was it four years I wish we had a Raspberry Pi 5 but we haven't and uh, strangely it, it doesn't even get listed in Raspberry Pi news so this is Raspberry Pi news and usually updates are on there whether they didn't see it as a, a major enough update but I would have thought it was in the Raspberry Pi news and so I checked the GitHub to have a look and uh, I use the Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit, which is this one, um, but it comes up with no releases published. So let's get rid of that because there is a change log here on the Raspberry Pi OS site. And you can see there's quite a lot of changes. So this is the 3rd of May, 2023. You can see look, it's updating all the time in the background, this page, the adverts are loading and loading and loading, right. So 64-bit Mathematica added. Some bug fixes here about CPU temperature plugin, X server crash when changing screen orientation, Chromium updated to 113.0, Raspberry Pi imager updated to 1.7.4, VNC updated, updated VLC hardware acceleration patch. Sounds interesting. Lib camera, add generalized statistics handling. Lots of things about lib camera and Pi camera too, if you use camera attachments for your Pi. And just a little bit at the bottom here, look, Linux kernel 6.1.21. Now I use Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit more than anything else on the Raspberry Pi, but I use KDE Plasma. So this is KDE Plasma desktop environment installed into Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit because the 64 bit OS definitely works better than the 32 bit. And I wanted to see if this updates fine. So let's update this. You can see there's updates available here. So most of it are probably already updated because uh, KD Plasma auto updates. So let's do update all and we're all up to date. And let's run NeoFetch. So Control Alt T, NeoFetch. Yeah, kernel 6.1.21 V8. So let's download the latest copy of Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit. I always like to have a, a fresh copy. So choose OS. So you can see the default still comes up as the 32-bit, the most compatible with the most amount of Raspberry Pis because not all of them work with the 64-bit OS. But as I'm on a Raspberry Pi 4B, I'm going to use the 64-bit version. And you can see here, 32, 32, this one's 64. Uh, so this is 0.8 gig, so this isn't the full version. You see, the Pi OS full version, which is the 32-bit, which comes more loaded with apps and various different things, is 2.6 gigabyte. The one I use for this KDE Plasma build is this one, uh, because the full version you can't get uh, in 64-bit, it looks like, or certainly not from this downloader. Uh, and this is the light version without a desktop environment. So I'm going to pick this one, choose storage, and I put in a 64 gig Lexar SD card. And let's hit right and yes and come back when that's all done okay that's all done now if you're interested in running this version of this os so we do show desktop with all the tweaks and tips and everything it works really really well for me uh, i've got uh, several videos in a playlist of exactly how i did this so if you want to do it on your own uh, if you want to install various different apps that i've got things like pi apps and pi kiss uh, it's been optimized, uh, video performance has been optimized, there's all sorts of overclocking options in there that are very easy to do. I've installed a remote desktop, uh, I've installed NeoFetch, P-Sensor for checking the temperatures which I particularly like, so P-Sensor uh, remembers how hot it got and it also just displays it really nicely. I've also installed Gparted for partitioning and expanding partitions. 
and I've also installed PySafe, which is excellent for backing up operating systems, which I'll be using to back up this operating system or a fresh copy, uh, and I'll make that download available uh, as I have done with all the other KDE plasmas, but because I haven't updated it in a while, it just needs a newer one that's fully up to date with this new kernel. So let's close all this down and have a look at Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. So let's unplug the SSD drive that I run KDE Plasma from, switch off and switch on again so it boots from the SD card and that's booted up just fine. So let's just install NeoFetch to check the kernel. Yep, 6.1.21. So I thought it'd be interesting to see side by side which apps are on this version and which are on the full version. So what I'm going to do, do we get Raspberry Pi Imager in here? So across the Windows key, start typing Imager. Yeah, we do get Imager now. It didn't used to be included in Raspberry Pi OS, but it's great to see it's in there now. Would you have to click on the icon? Oh, you have to double click, don't you? So choose OS and let's go with the full version, which is this 2.6 gig version. And let's pop this onto a 32 gig SD card. So I've just put that in and hit right. And yes, and come back when that's all done. It's taken a while. It's quite warm in here and uh, my PWM fan is uh, occasionally starting and stopping, but running at a really, really slow speed and you can't hear it at all. Okay, so that's all written to the SD card so I can take that out and I can pop that into this one. Let's plug it into a monitor and start that up and just go through the same setup as before. Okay, that's all up to date, let's restart it. Okay, so I've got 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS on this one and I've got 32-bit full Raspberry Pi OS on this one. I'm going to use this one for screen capture and I'll just overlay any extra apps that uh, are on the 32-bit version. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So programming is on both. We've got education and office on the 32-bit version, which we don't have on the 64-bit version. And we have way more on the 32-bit version. So you can see we've got Greenfoot Java, Mathematica, MU, Scratch, Scratch 3, Sense Hat Emulator, Sonic Pi, and Wolfram. Under education, we've got Smart Sim, which we don't have on the 64-bit operating system. Uh, under Office, we've got all of LibreOffice, Base, Calc, Draw, Impress, Math, and Writer. But you can obviously install that from the Add Remove Software option on Raspberry Pi. Under Internet, we've got Clause Mail and VNC Viewer as extras. Sound and video is the same. Graphics is the same. Accessories is the same. Help preferences, all of that is the same. So let's switch back to the 32-bit operating system and try some of these games. So let's try Boing. So space to start, and then we've just got cursor up and down to move our paddle. And this is funny because uh, in a recent Ultra Doc video I did, I was using this sort of game on a 1978 Binatone games console. So yeah, it's nice to see. Although this gets really fast, that's great. I have to try that as a two-player game, that's really nice. And Bunner, which is Frogger, clearly. So let's see. Oh, the screen goes up quite fast, though. Crikey. Oh. How far is a level? It's further than the original Frogger, because that used to be all in one screen. Oh. That's pretty good, pretty playable. Oh, 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 come on, something else come out. Oh, just missed the train as well. Yeah, this is good actually. It's good speed. Although it looks like the level is never ending. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm dead. Pretty good though. And cavern. Okay, so like a bubble bubble type. You have to be close to them to hit them then, do you? And we've got jump as well. 
Yeah, that's all right. And Myriapod. Yeah, nice bit of retro gaming. Nice sounds. Loads of bass. Oh, that was great shooting, wasn't it? Missed everything. Next level. Yeah, that works well. And soccer, which unfortunately doesn't work with a controller. So you have to use keyboard, but it'd be great to work with a controller. Uh, so let's go with medium. Yeah, space is kick. And this is based on, well, all those sort of 2D games like Sensible Soccer back in the 90s. If you want the extras, you do have to go for the 32-bit version if you want them all pre-installed. But I think that's generally advised for all the programming side of it, just for overall compatibility. But if you're running an operating system, 64-bit definitely runs faster, and that's why I use it for my KDE Plasma builds. Uh, I've done videos comparing 32 and 64-bit, and I will have an update to my KDE Plasma. I'll probably do a short video just to say that the upload is available for anybody who wants to try it out. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.